Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about competitive programming. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, is it true that competitive programming is a waste of time? Well, uh, that depends on what you mean by a waste of time. Uh, if you enjoy it or if you want to get good at some at the very least of the uh, sorts of questions you might get in a technical interview uh, usually there's a there's a good chance that you will get one or two or sometimes a hybrid of things where like the companies will focus on computer science -y, algorithmic types of questions which are the sorts of things that you might find in a competitive programming environment uh, but there's also a good chance that they will focus more on closer to reality types of tasks where you have a code test where you're supposed to build like a small API or you're going to build a small front-end application or something like that uh, to sort of prove that you have the skills necessary in order to to work in an IT company uh, but if your question I, I suspect I I sort of know where this is I, this is what I derive at the very least because I think the reason why you're asking is whether or not there's any type of overlap or additional value for you in terms of things that will help you get employed or things that will help you do well as a software developer and in that scenario I can tell you that on average no uh, you're not going to get a lot of uh, benefit from competitive programming uh, the reason being because the vast majority of what software developers are doing at least in the web space is a mix as a, it's a mix between almost always the same skills and the tooling like the experience you need to know all the tools and how to deploy things and like how to basically understand how the ecosystem around you works that is what's important the pure algorithmic problems are very rare in terms of like how complex they are and like uh, it, it's in in web guys it is a lot more about understanding business logic I mean there are I mean everything has an algorithm but you don't have to be able to implement like a, a knapsack algorithm or like solving the knapsack problem or a graph traversal problem or uh, like some type of equation like high in mathematics like heavy on mathematics or anything like that, that that's usually you, I, most developers go most of their career without having to deal with so, such issues within their software development uh, one so it's and it's also one of the reasons why people criticize having like these sorts of die-hard computer science questions as sort of the gateway in order to work as a software developer because it's so rare I mean you want people of course that are smart but it's so rare that you use those specific like that that specific talent and most developers don't pass like these sorts of questions I can tell you that much uh, I mean it's not uncommon for people to work as software developers but not be able to do a lot of this stuff as uh, the competitive programmers are doing and so the value for you as a professional is dis debatable I would say uh, because it's fr frankly it's not going to make you more effective at your job it's that simple it's similar to imagine this imagine if we're going to do like an analogy or something like that imagine that you are a cab driver as a software developer like that's what you're doing you're, you're driving people around around or like an uber driver or whatever you are right uh, you're driving people around and the skills that you need in order to do that effectively are one set of skills now you could argue that it would be beneficial for you to also have a side hustle as a Formula One driver because you're driving. But the reality is that if you are a Formula One driver, that doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to be a very good ca cab driver because the skills that you need to drive a cab has to do with more. It's a different set. Like you do driving for sure, and I've said similar things about computer science, like data, data, uh, data scientists, and so forth, and software developers, where sure coding is a part of it and in this case competitive programmers versus professionals it the coding is the shared area but what you're actually t the types of problem you're solving 
and the fact that the skills that you need in order to do well in competitive programming are much more usually academic and algorithm based and the skills you need to succeed as a web developer etc etc has to do with not, not just the the algorithms and coding skills but the emphasis is much more on everything around it as well uh, you can almost think of it as one is almost exclusively looking at how good are you at algorithms and the other one has yeah you need to be good at some you to a certain degree on uh, at algorithms but you also have to know all these tools you know need to know how to uh, get all the information you need you need to be able to work independently you need to be able to talk to people connect with people uh, you need to like have all this other stuff that is necessary in order to to do that job effectively so what I want you to take away from this is very simply that if you think that you're gonna do better as a, like a web developer or like a software developer uh, from learn from spending time in competitive pro competitive programming uh, I would say that you're sort of then yes I agree you waste your time because the skills that you will get from competitive programming although it's useful because you're trying your skills at writing effective algorithms and coming up with uh, solutions to fairly logic heavy problems or complicated problems it's not gonna serve you better it's not gonna be a substitute for all the other stuff that you need to learn as a professional web developer at the very least uh, as a silly example your career will likely benefit depending now of course now I'm broad stroking it a little bit if you are a web developer it's probably better you're gonna serve your career better to learn the CSS standards than doing competitive programming assuming now that you have the coding skills necessary to actually do say back-end work or front-end work or so forth uh, or it might actually serve you better to learn how to work with cloud solutions or work with uh, docker or something like containerizations etc etc because there's only so much return on investment you're gonna get from being really really good at algorithms it will absolutely help you uh, especially in the uh, not just the, the mental tooling because I mean the more you understand and the better your brain is at processing complicated problems of course that's gonna help you to a certain degree uh, and it's also gonna help you in potentially in interviews and things like that because this is where uh, this sort of stuff becomes relevant for someone who's gonna be a professional software developer but you, you as I said you have to understand that this is not the, it's just one dimension it's just one thing and the levels that you need in to do really well, well in competitive programming are not necessarily going to be as high to do successful to do well within software development it's a range of other skills that are that has to be there so it's more dimensions uh, but the, and the peaks for the that coding understanding and comprehension of algorithms is not as high so if uh, if I may say so I think that you should absolutely do competitive programming if you find that interesting but don't think of it as something you should be focusing on so that you will get hired as a professional web developer or something like that because if you want to get to that level or like to do that sort of thing it is as I said it's like if you want to be a cab driver don't go and try to be a Formula One race car driver and vice versa because you're you're disproportionately putting your time on things that doesn't matter as much as you might think uh, depending on the role that you're like that you're trying to get have a great day